Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to have the best seats in synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers they will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, Help us to commit ourselves to you, not only out of our abundance, but also of our scarcity. Amen. The Gospel of Mark is an interesting place to spend a lot of time, you think? We've been spending quite some time there, 12 and a half chapters at this point, and every couple of weeks, we kind of take a hard left into an entirely different topic. This section of Mark is kind of a series of teachable moments. And sometimes they really seem non sequitur. Sometimes it feels like you missed a day and something just happened right here and you're not sure what. But some of that is just the way that the lectionary is divided up in order to tell stories. But some of it is also the way that Mark tells the stories of Jesus. Mark has a point in everything that he shares. And Mark has a point in the way that he shares all of the things that he shares. So we kind of have two loosely connected, but also very different sections of our gospel this morning. We have the section talking about the scribes, and then there's like a paragraph break, and it's an entirely different section talking about the treasury and speaking to the disciples about what Jesus is seeing. So when Jesus is talking about the scribes, this connects to the past several passages that you may or may not remember from weeks past that talk about when the, when the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the temple all like to ask Jesus those trick questions. You remember those trick questions they asked Jesus? The questions about things like paying taxes and who should do this and who should do that and why are you doing this on this day and how are you proclaiming a gospel and is it the same as the gospel that we're proclaiming based on the Pentateuch, those first five books that we know in the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, the law, the, the words that tell those in the temple how to be faithful, that set up the structure of the acting out of their daily lives of faith. And then the last scribe that talks to Jesus prior to where we are today approaches Jesus and this is different in Mark than in the other Gospels that tell the same story. The other Gospels that tell the same story present the scribe kind of in a gotcha kind of way. But Mark describes this particular scribe coming in a more open manner. That the scribe approaches Jesus saying, you answered these other questions wisely, so I'm going to ask you a question and that question that that scribe asked was about the greatest commandment. And Jesus had more of an answer for that scribe than he did for many of those other trick questions. Pointing back to the first commandment, the greatest, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your understanding. And you should love your neighbor as yourself. And if you do all of these things, then the rest falls in line. And the scribe that Jesus was talking to then recognized the wisdom of that and commented on it. Because if you love the Lord your God first, then you can't have false idols. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you can't have, you, you can't lust after the things that your neighbor has. So these are all things that kind of fall together under these two umbrellas. And Jesus says to that particular scribe, you are not far from the kingdom of God. All right, pause. That was not today's reading. We flip the page to today's reading, and today's reading starts with, beware of the scribes. But Jesus doesn't say beware of all the scribes, does he? Jesus says beware of the scribes who? And he goes on to name some specific things that some of the scribes are doing. Walking around in long robes, to be treated with respect in the marketplace, to have the best seats, places of honor. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. So I'm going to translate this into more current language. Beware of the scribes who wear their Jesus number one t-shirt just to be noticed as being a Christian, who say long and loud prayers just to be noticed as Christian, but whose actions don't back it up. Beware of the ones with who act out the systemic racism and continue it every day, even in awareness. Those who perpetrate the predatory lending practices. Those who take away from the ones who have little to offer and give back to those already in abundance. Beware of those who abuse positions of power solely for the sake of their own glory. But you know, there's no scribe, at least quoted here, that says, but not all scribes, even though Jesus has clearly said, but not all scribes, right? Jesus has specified who it is that's misusing their power and their prestige and their position in church leadership and in community leadership. And Jesus is putting out a warning. As we, the disciples, continue to live faithfully, don't model ourselves out of those, after those who take the power for their own glory. Model yourself instead after those who use their faith for the good of more, the good of the community, the good of others, those who love their neighbors as themselves. And then we skip to the next section of our gospel. Jesus sitting down, watching those come in to the temple and approach the treasury and what they put into the treasury. And several rich folks are noted as putting in large sums. But of those large sums, often it's just a gift that isn't really noticed or felt. But Jesus points out the widow specifically. The widow who comes in with two small copper coins that Jesus states as all she has to live on. So this, this widow, is this one whose home has been devoured by the unfaithful scribes? Is this widow one who has lived into the trust and faithfulness of the community, knowing that when she gives all that she has to give, that it's okay because God and the community of faith will care for her like the widow in our reading from Kings who fed Elijah first and then was able to feed herself and her family. Is this widow giving all that she has to give in trust or in defeat? We don't really know the answer to that. 
we tend to read it that she's giving it in trust. And we, as Christians, tend to read Scripture by putting ourselves into Scripture, don't we? That's, we, we look for where we fit in the story. And our tendency, as a whole, is to put ourselves in the role of the one that Jesus speaks well of. Like we're the ones who have it all figured out. We see ourselves as the one who has given, not just out of abundance, but also out of scarcity, so that we have to trust God. We can't just trust ourselves. But the reality is that often where we fit best in the scripture might not be in that role of the hero, or at very least not only in that role of hero. I think that we likely can see ourselves reflected in the scribe from weeks past who was close to the kingdom of God. We can see ourselves reflected in the scribes whom Jesus told us to beware of. We can see ourselves in those rich folks who give from abundance. And we can see ourselves as the widow who gave out of her scarcity. And I think there's value in seeing ourselves in each of those spaces. Looking back up at the section about scribes, it calls to mind a Family Circle comic strip. Anybody read Family Circle? I'm not the only one who still reads the comics in a printed newspaper. I get teased by the fact that maybe I'm not I'm not the only person of my generation who receives a paper newspaper, am I? Uh, I read the newspaper, and Hannah reads the comics too. So, you know, even the six-year-old reads this comic. Uh, do you remember the character in the Family Circle comic of Not Me? The Not Me character? There was always two panels side by side. And Mom was asking, usually Jeffy, but not always, what happened to the vase in the living room. And Jeffy's answer was what? Not me. And in the, in the matching panel, there's the picture of the living room and the vase crashed in the floor and the outline of Jeffy that's not colored in, but just the outline that says, not me. It resonates, doesn't it? Because often our response to anything that feels accusatory is to say, not me. When sometimes a better answer might be, oh my, but how can I help? How can I fix it? How can I change it? How can I live differently? So as we read about the scribes and we hear the echo of the voices saying, not all scribes, or not all white people, or not all Christians, when we want to respond to those calling out, often rightfully, the ways in which Christians, or white people, or tall people, or short people, or hearing people, or non-hearing people, act unthinkingly towards those who are different or have different needs. Instead of saying, oh my, how can I be different? We spend our time saying, not me, and jumping away. As people of faith, we see ourselves and say, it's not me who gives out of my abundance. I give enough to be a significant portion of what I have so that it shows my reliance and my trust on God. I'm not giving my leftovers I'm giving my firsts. I'm not giving what's left over after my Amazon.com shopping spree. I'm giving my firsts to God, trusting that I will have enough. How do we live in that place that says, yes, me, God, how can I be more? How can I be different? 
How can I live in a way that I reflect the glory of God, not the glory of myself? The widow is relying on the God that she knows and trusts, the community that she knows and she trusts. Jesus calls out the scribes in the ways that they are not relying on God and community and are instead lifting themselves up. Jesus shines a light in these ways so that we see these things in ourselves as well. And on this day, as we recognize our saints, as we remember those that we have loved, those that we have lost, those who are in the more immediate presence of our Lord and Savior, we're reminded that they too, faithful, were human. We look to them and see the glory of God, even as we see ways that we can do more or different or better. We are reminded that none of us have all of the answers. And that we are all called to say to one another, my God loves you and I do too. So I need to act like it. My God provides for you and me. And we provide for one another also. And we need to act like it. My God calls you and names you as worthy child of God with me. And I can name you that way too, to recognize one another as brothers and sisters, siblings together in faith. And we can act like it too. How can we live out the abundance of the community of faith to care for those with less, to care for those facing those predatory lending practices or those systemic injustices and those systemic racist structures that are present in our world? How can we live differently so that God can be seen in us more. As we see God in our saints, we look to one another for God as well. And we look to ourselves to see where can God be seen in me? Am I the scribe that Jesus is saying to beware of? Or am I a scribe living differently into the community of faith. Amen.